Hello and assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen welcome to yet another episode of the dental talk today we have another special guest with us here today we've had one forensic odontologist on the show we have another forensic odontologist with us here today dr mohammad khan asif is a forensic odont forensic odontologist and a researcher he is currently serving as the consul- consultant forensic odontologist and head of the research and development and head of the forensic odontology department at the shifa college of dentistry he is also the chairman of the shifa college of dentistry research development board so you already know we'll mostly be talking about forensic odontology and the importance of research he is also the program director for the one year advanced diploma in forensic odontology at the idsr he is he is also specialized in oral and maxillofacial advanced imaging he was awarded a phd degree in forensic odontology uh, and oral and maxillofacial imaging with distinction at the university of malaya with an excellence award he's he's previously done an an mdsc in forensic odontology as well in 2018 and he completed his bds degree from the sadar begum dental college in 2012 thank you so much sir for joining us i know we've been trying to set this up for a while uh, but finally we are doing it Yes, sir. Ab house is Ramzan going. Uh, yes, uh, Alhamdulillah. So, good morning, everyone, and Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I hope all the viewers uh, must be enjoying good health. Thank you very much, Dr. Ghulam Muhammad Paracha, for inviting me to the platform of Dental Talks, and uh, thank you very much for your kind comments as well. And I must really appreciate uh, the effort, but in fact, the uh, effort of you and your team for making so much, this sir. platform uh, a success. Uh, thank you so much sir we you guys are projecting uh, the various aspects of dentistry in such a professional manner it's thank really you so amazing. much sir. I, I, and i'm a big supporter i am a big oh, follower so. of this platform thank and you so I much do sir we wait regularly for your videos to be uploaded so a great job well done keep up the good work thank you so much sir that means a lot coming from a guest who's on the show and one thing that i did forget to mention uh, sir has published a, a lot of 23 actually high quality research articles which is far higher than what any young doctor can claim that they might have uh, in the last 6 years and he's one of the very few forensic odontologists in pakistan sir with your permission should we start the interview yeah sure sure perfectly uh, all right sir thoda piche jate hain ज़्यादा पीछे नहीं. Tell us briefly how you got into dentistry and what were those uh, four years like in dental school at Sardar Begum. Uh, okay, the actually uh, to be frank, uh, I really wanted to go into medicine at first, uh, yeah. but uh, thankfully I'm very thankful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that uh, He has chosen dentistry as a profession for me. And yeah. if I go back in time and the same question, uh, if they give me an option, I would for sure choose dentistry over medicine now. uh and as far as the journey uh, is concerned at the undergraduate level uh the overall journey was fantastic and uh, despite few bumpy rides on the way which is yeah. expected uh, because of the despite the academic burden uh, it was the best yeah. time of my life yeah. at that time being a student you think that the time should fly off like in a fast forward mode uh, but now when i recall all those yeah. uh, memories i i had uh, cherished some great memories with my friends colleagues and teachers so i i really want to go back in that time because uh, yeah. considering the yeah. professional burden and responsibilities currently yeah and that's what i tell my students as well that uh, they should enjoy this enjoy. moment fullest because, yeah uh, they're not going to get this time back again <laughs> yeah maybe apne students ko i'm i been i was working as a demo at uh, azra nai dental college in the maxillofacial surgery department so mere bhi jo students unko bhi main kehta tha yaar ye time enjoy kar lo इसके बाद आगे जिम्मेदारियां जिम्मेदारियां ठीक है फन नहीं है इतना देखो उसका अपना मजा होता है बट यू कॉलेज लाइफ का अपना मजा होता है बिल्कुल सर डेफिनेटली सर आप वंस यू गॉट डन विद योर बीडीएस यू डिड योर ओन प्राइवेट प्रैक्टिस फॉर अ वाइल एंड देन यू डिसाइडेड टू चूज एंड परस्यू फॉरेंसिक ओडोंटोलॉजी फर्स्ट टेल अस व्हाई एंड सेकंड हाउ डिड यू गेट एडमिशन एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ मलायास प्रोग्राम Uh, okay yes uh, i worked as a dental surgeon for about one and a half year in a hospital uh, and then i had my own private practice as well and the reason for doing the job was because i was initially planning to do mclean dental for uk and uh, one of the requirements for the mclean dental was to have two years clinical experience uh, mm-hmm. so that's why i started uh, as a dental surgeon in a hospital okay. uh, but then i was also fond of traveling so uh, i was uh, planning to go to egypt on a vacation So one of my friend Dr Abbas who was already doing his post graduation uh, at the University of Malaya he said yeah. why are you going to Egypt you should come to Malaysia it's a beautiful country you should 
explore it. I said, okay, mm -hmm. fine, that's a good idea. So when I went there, he said, let's go to University of Malaya and let's meet my supervisors and all that. So when I went there, I was really impressed with this and especially the supervisors yeah. and all that. So they set up interviews for me, their admission test and everything. I had meetings with the faculty and all that. And that's how I got into UM and they oh, offered me okay. also research assistant at that time. So I went as a tourist, but I was then enrolled as a postgraduate student. So it was a bit of funny as well, but oh, yeah, shocking for me is, as well. Yeah, for it's my a, family as well. When that's I told a very them, unique story. Come back. Yeah, that's yeah. a very unique story. I've never heard a story like that for getting into yeah, a university exactly. program. All yeah. right, that's that's perfect. Usually, uh, if it's not like that, like it's not like how's the other way of applying to the program? See, uh, it's it's they have the online application system. Take okay. It. So if yeah. you want, if you are interested, you just fill uh, up the online form, and yeah. they will assess it. Then they will call for the interview. Then it goes through the faculty uh, meeting. Then the postgraduate meeting, then the senate meeting, and that's how then if they feel they give you an offer letter. But very important is the research output. Uh, okay. Although they uh, offered me provisional offer letter at that time, mm -hmm. but then later on senate rejected my first application uh, oh, yeah. because they said uh, you don't have a research output. So that's why I tell my students you have to be very good, especially at undergraduate level, yeah. in research output. So then I worked as a research assistant for three months. And then I showed my research output and then they enrolled me as a student for the postgraduate program. So they're very strict. And even if any one of you are planning to go abroad uh, yeah. for post-graduation, yeah. you must have a research output, irrespective of whether you're going for the clinical speciality or non-clinical yeah. speciality. Yeah, yes. that's true. That's absolutely true. Um, when I was an undergrad, I I had a little idea that how important research is, but now in professional life, now I truly understand why Research with another focus on that. Chale sir, we'll talk about research as well. Um, what made you choose a career in forensic odontology? Now, itni koi ye Pakistan mein, I feel like four or five forensic odontologists are not more than that. Max ten hoge. I'm not sure, but not many forensic odontologists here. So of course, there's a gap in the market, right? Um, आपने ये क्यों? थोड़ा सा ना बस हमें forensic odontology as a field and as a career. Deconstruct करके बताएंगे ये है क्या basically ठीक है देखिए when I got through the the admission process and all that I was given two options pediatric dentistry and forensic odontology because the meetings I had and the interviews I had were with the specialists or experts belonging to these specialties so I was confused at that time as well so I contacted my mentors in Pakistan and they said both of the specialties have got tremendous potential but you should go for the speciality which you like the most so, uh, and believe me, I was clueless at that time about, about forensic odontology because we were not taught uh, this speciality yeah. or any of the yeah. speciality in Pakistan at undergraduate level. Mm. So I searched online and because since childhood I had uh, uh, like uh, likeness for the criminal investigations and police investigations and all that. Mm. So that's how yeah. it clicked my mind and yeah. I went for the forensic odontology. And another reason was, which was very important as well, mm -hmm. I was very much inspired and impressed by the supervisor, uh, potential supervisor at that time, which was Prof. Prabhakar Nambia, who is, who, who is not a great professional, but a great human being as well. It's very mm -hmm. important that you should choose yeah. your supervisor as well. Because yeah. uh, he told me once that it's very important to find right people at the right time of your life. And yeah, if you find true. them, nobody can stop you from success. So it's very important. You should choose your supervisors very carefully as well. This is how I went into the forensic odontology. And forensic odontology is a speciality. It's a branch of dentistry or forensics, which mainly deals with proper professional handling, examination, interpretation, and presentation of dental evidence in both the civil and criminal legal procedures and courts. Uh, the main domains of this, because of the limited time, I'm not going into the detail of it, but yeah, yeah, the main domains of uh, this speciality is disaster victim identification, uh, dental age estimation, uh, uh, dental DNA analysis, dental malpractice and fraudulence uh, investigations, oral maxillofacial forensic imaging, mm -hmm. calloscopy, rocoscopy. So these are some of the important aspects of forensic ontology. Perfect, sir. That is. Uh... That's a brilliant answer. Pura uh, apne forensic odontology ko explain kar Now, um, who in Pakistan, if someone wants to pursue it, who kis tarah ke insaan ko career choose karna chahiye in forensic odontology ya further studies in forensic odontology? <clears throat> See, for any of the specialties, uh, you have yeah. to uh, 
show interest in that speciality. I tell That's everyone true. because unfortunately in Pakistan, because of our education system, um, most of our even house officers are not sure what they're going to do. That's true. So they should choose any of the speciality for which they have liking. As I said, I chose forensic odontology because I was very much interested in criminal investigations and all these police investigations and yeah. all that. So if you have an interest for that, you should go for it. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so your sub specialty is in oral and maxillofacial advanced imaging. How do you relate that back to forensic odontology? Or the medical imaging ki jo knowledge hai, wo ab aapko yahan pe bhi help kar rahi hogi, bahut zada help kar rahi hogi in a different way. How how did you relate it back to forensic odontology? Okay. The the beauty of forensic odontology is that it is integrated with so many other specialties like That's true, yeah. oral biology, uh, dental materials, oral pathology, community yeah. dentistry. Forensic pathology, forensic medicine, criminology, uh, dental ethics. So it's integrated. Uh, and as far as oral maxillofacial radiology is concerned, uh, it plays a very significant role in forensic odontology. Especially, I, I think forensic odontology without uh, oral maxillofacial radiology uh, is incomplete because it yeah. plays a very vital role in disaster victim identification and dental age estimation. So That's you have to be trained well in oral maxillofacial radiology if you want to become a good forensic odontologist. And both of my research projects in my master's and PhD were both related to advanced imaging, which was CBCT. And I was also going through the MRI and medical CT knowledge and all that. And I was mm -hmm. trained then in the oral maxillofacial radiology department because of my research projects as well. And then I worked, I was hired as a visiting faculty at the yeah. oral maxillofacial radiology at the faculty of dentistry university of malaya so i served there uh, for one and a half to two years as well which helped me as well in further refining my skills as far as oral maxillofacial radiology is concerned perfect sir perfect uh sir you have forensic odontology what depth you have uh phd bhi ki hai. Yeah, and it is not a career that many go and do or study do and it's not even a career it's not even a field that we study much in depth in our undergrad right what has been your biggest learning from studying forensic odontology? Aapne aisa kya seekha hai jo otherwise aap na seekh paate? If a koi unique, okay, uh, like, yes, agar aap, manne, koi ek cheez bata hai. Yes sir, please. Yes, you, you're absolutely right. Uh, and this was one of the reasons as well why I chose forensic odontology because this absolutely. specialty was not taught to us during yeah. our undergraduate program. Not only this, but if you look at all the emerging specialties, unfortunately, uh, like yeah. geriatric dentistry, Implantology, uh, oral radiology in depth, the way oral radiology. learned it, uh, they, it's not in the proper curriculum of our undergraduate Yeah, system. that's true. So this was one of the reasons why I chose forensic odontology, because I wanted to explore that. Now, the biggest learning curve, see, irrespective of forensic odontology, the biggest difference that I found in the postgraduate system uh, in the abroad and in the developed world and in Pakistan is that they rely and they focus on um, teamwork rather than individually uh, working as a specialist. And the teamwork yeah. is very important when you're doing especially forensic odontology because you have, it's integrated in so many other specialties that in order to achieve your goals or in order to solve a particular forensic case, you need to integrate with different departments uh, having different specialities. So it's very important that you should have a teamwork. And this yeah. is what I learned there and which is unfortunately lacking in Pakistan. And we should work yeah. on that rather than working as a separate specialist. Perfect. Uh, that is a beautiful answer, sir. That's a brilliant answer. Uh, sir, after you completed your, completed your MSc, MDSc, uh, you stayed on in Malaysia and you continued, continued on to do your PhD. Okay, on the PhD key. Firstly, why did you decide to do a PhD? Okay. Um, why did you decide to do a PhD? And then we'll move on to the next question regarding your PhD. Okay, so see, when I completed my master's, uh, I was offered job uh, positions uh, in Pakistan by my mentors. And I was confused at that time what to do, uh, because at that time, there was only one forensic odontologist, uh, Dr. Mayun. Uh, oh, Mayun, Dr. Uh, Mayun, yeah. Yes, and yes, he was uh, the only practicing forensic odontologist. So there was uh, there is a great demand still in Pakistan. So I was offered positions in Pakistan. Uh, so I was confused, but at that time, my parents, especially my father, uh, he supported me. He said, no way, you should not be 
looking for the jobs or the financial aspects and all that you should achieve mm. your dream first and then the whole world will be open for you and i think mm. it was absolutely right. the world is open for me and i'm very happy now uh, after doing my phd and going for it straight away rather than taking a break uh, in between acha sir sir that 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 absolutely makes sense sir what made you acha ye chhode how what kind of a person uh should do a phd okay har bande not everyone is the kind of person who can do a phd right jahan tak mujhe samajh aati hai from talking to other phd uh, who's who've done their phds what kind of a student is some is a kind of a student who can do a phd easily not easily phd hoti to bahut mushkil hai sabko pata hai but like you know he won't have many like wo phd mein jaake tang nahi ho jayega ki yaar main kis cheez mein ghus gaya hu ek student ke andar wo kya qualities honi chahiye pehli baat aur dusri baat jab aap sir msc karne gaye the aapko kitni research aati thi ठीक है आप वो किस लेवल पे रिसर्च आती थी हाउ मच रिसर्च डिड यू नो ठीक है देखिए रिसर्च इज समथिंग दैट यू डोंट डोंट लर्न इन फ्यू डेज वीक्स और इवन मंथ्स एब्सोल्युटली इट टेक्स टाइम एंड एज यू सेड सो आई विल गिव माय एग्जांपल व्हेन आई स्टार्टेड माय रिसर्च आफ्टर गोइंग आफ्टर गोइंग टू मलेशिया इनिशियली व्हेन आई रोट माय मैनुस्क्रिप्ट ड्राफ्ट एंड आई सबमिटेड टू माय सुपरवाइजर माय सुपरवाइजर सेड इट्स अ वेरी गुड एफर्ट बट इट्स अ स्कूल बॉय राइटर so uh, so very is it semi basic idea yeah. so this was the level when i went there uh, yeah. for my research yeah. and uh, unfortunately hamara research network in pakistan is not that good uh, yeah, at undergraduate true. level and that's the reason why at shifa we have introduced now an integrated curriculum and research longitudinal thread from year 1 to year 4 and then in the house job as well yeah. so uh, that was the initial the state of my research skills so then my supervisor said if you want to improve your research skills and this this would uh, i would also suggest our young researchers is to read more and more literature the more literature you read uh, mm-hmm. you improve your research skills and by literature i mean the quality research literature which is published in good journals mm-hmm. because the good problem news. is if you're not reading a good literature which is published yeah. in a good impact factor journal you will uh, develop those skills okay so it's very important that you should go and read the literature from the good research uh, journals so this is the first and then uh, some of the tips for the young researchers who are interested in phd or who can do phd is first they must be patient uh, patience is very important uh, because for a phd uh, student see research is not not just like a clinical case like you solve yeah. it you do it yeah. and you get the response straight away you have to be very patient it may take 6 months or even one year or more than that in collection of data then you analyze it then you interpret it then you write the manuscript draft then you approve it from your supervisor then you submit it and then publication may take longer may take yeah. few months or may take years so you have to be very patient secondly is uh, you have to be honest with your work hmm. why i'm saying true. this because in research uh, luck matters why why i'm saying this because when you uh, submit your article uh it may go to a good reviewer who can give you constructive suggestions or it may go yeah. to a very uh, uh, like bad reviewer who can really yeah. uh, tear you apart yeah. so uh, it matters and similar examiner as well so allah is watching you so if you yeah. are honest with your research work he'll make the journey very easy for you and then cons- consistency is very important for research Uh, I've seen a lot of people who work 14 to 15 hours on their in a day on their research projects, but then for the next two days they skip the sessions. Mm-hmm. They don't come to do any research work, uh, which is not good. Consistency is very important. Even I still remember I used to work six hours a day on my research project because I was also a visiting lecturer. I had some other commitments as mm-hmm. well. But I used to work like six hours a day, even on Saturday and Sundays as well. I don't remember even sometimes on my Eid Eid holidays after prayers. i used to come back and i used to work on my research work etc so consistency is very important and uh, to be a good researcher how would you know that you are now moving to in the right direction is to uh, achieve the highest level of critical thinking ability if you have the highest critical thinking ability then you can develop your objectives you can come up with good methodologies you can discuss uh your other studies and you can conclude as well you can come up with a good research proposal as well so highest critical thinking ability is very important for a young researcher who is interested in a phd project 
Perfect, sir. That is a beautiful, uh, that is an absolutely beautiful answer. Consistency, being honest to your work and the other things that you've said, absolutely brilliant. Sir, because you've talked a lot about research, we'll come to your research. Um, you've published around 23 research articles in very high impact uh, dental journals. How can student or fresh grads like us get more involved in research because at an undergrad level focus research you're doing an amazing job at chifa i know because my cousin studies at chifa but how can students or fresh grads like us get involved get more involved in research see uh, research as i said you don't learn it in few days or weeks Absolutely. for research especially at the undergraduate level you must have a longitudinal thread like from year one to year four. Unfortunately, in Pakistan, we only do research at undergraduate level in only second year. And uh, being a research uh, like uh, student, I would say, uh, it's, it's not possible to conduct a quality research in one year uh, under community dentistry, especially with so much academic burden on your uh, hands as well. That's true. So uh, it's very important to have a longitudinal thread at the undergraduate level. And this is the time where uh, we uh, develop the base of a student as a researcher. Another important thing, which is very important, that why I see uh, research not going at a faster rate or developing at a faster mm -hmm. rate in Pakistan, is that uh, when when I read, uh, when I talk to the deans or directors or policymakers or even the PhD researchers, the only excuse that they give me that uh, is because of the limited grants we cannot conduct research, mm -hmm. and this is most of the time with undergraduate students as well. Uh, so uh, see, this is a fact. I do believe that grants are very important for quality research. But the good thing in Pakistan is that we have so much uh, research gap that we can conduct quality research with limited resources as well. So this goes for the postgraduate projects as well as for the undergraduate projects as well. So this is a plus point. Another thing which we are lacking in Pakistan, which I uh, experienced in the last two years, is that the research culture or the research environment, it's not there. We need to develop research culture and research environment for our undergraduate students, postgraduate students, and for the faculty as well. Unfortunately, uh, most of the people are conducting research just for their promotions. So yeah, we have to develop true. research culture and research environment. And this is the biggest difference that I saw uh, abroad in the developed world and in Pakistan. And another thing which is very important is that uh, we need to educate our policy makers uh, in order mm. to develop or come up with the research oriented policies. Unfortunately, yeah. in Pakistan, in the last two decades or three decades, uh, nobody has given importance to research uh, when it comes That's to true. policy development or policy. So it's very important, yeah. That's absolutely true, sir. Western word mein kaha na, publish or perish. So, बस ये इसी तरह के कुछ यहाँ पर इसी तरह के कुछ यहाँ पर आपको policy making करनी पड़ेगी. You're absolutely bang on about that. Ke, yes, यहाँ पे research culture and they have a passion for research. Yes. yes. And they have a passion for research, which is uh, yes, sir. Uh, very good. That's absolutely true. I'll tell you a story of one of my seniors. Um, because personally, ab, after after working and getting into professional life a bit, एक डेढ़ साल हो गया हाउस जॉब खत्म हुए हुए तो रिसर्च की पॉइंट्स भी समझ आई है चार पांच रिसर्च आर्टिकल्स भी क्योंकि फाइनल ईयर में शुरू कर दिए थे तो पब्लिश हो गए अब तक but research has never excited me ठीक है I I did research but it was for the fact के यार करनी है CV में डालनी है तो करनी पड़ेगी but excited नहीं की उस तरह से कभी then I was talking to one of my seniors she's doing her DDS in America so she told me that uh, she said that I didn't have research I just did it so she said and now I realize that it was because there was no research culture there were no research culture there were supervisors and there were no research culture so I think that I have to do more work in clinical work because there is a person who is helping you there is an interdisciplinary environment there is a person who is helping you 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 यहाँ आके फिर मजा आना शुरू हुआ, so you're very yes the research culture एक बनाना that is very very important. Now you've been working here, you've been working here for the past two years I believe. What are the challenges that we have as a country in terms of the quality of research in Pakistan? आपने वो बात की that people usually do research here to get their promotions and just get their name into a journal. हम मैं मेरा भी आजकल एक आर्टिकल फंसा हुआ है पब्लिकेशन में जिससे पूछा वो कहता है नाम डाल दो देखते हैं कहाँ पब्लिश होगा तो खैर एनीवे वे वे ट्राइंग टू डू समथिंग अबाउट दैट 
what are the, challenge, the challenges that we have in terms of the quality of research in Pakistan and how can we fix them in your opinion? Yeah, as I mentioned, um, uh, it's I would say because of the grants unavailability, this is one of the reasons. But because of the research gap, we can conduct quality research uh, as well. And secondly, the, as I said, we need to develop, uh, we need to promote research culture. If we don't yeah. promote it, uh, then our research is going nowhere. And uh, as I said, policymakers, they need to be awakened and we should come up with the research oriented policies. And these are the things that what I felt in the last two years uh, is two years. lacking in yeah. Pakistan. So what was your PhD thesis about? Yes, my, I worked on, a, we developed a novel method of net late estimation uh, by assessing the developing root apices uh, among Malaysian oh. children, juveniles, and adults. So we developed the 3D models of the developing canines and uh, third molars, and then we assessed the root surface area uh, through the surface area analysis using Mimics and Thematic software. So it was a novel method, a new method, yeah. uh, okay. which we have validated on Malaysian population. And now we expecting that more and more populations, uh, the, the, the formulas will be validated on more populations across the country. So, so when we talk about, uh, uh, I really, I've always wondered this and I'm so glad that you brought it up after listening to this. Because I have read it on LinkedIn, it's a novel method. So how does it feel like a novel research that, oh, I've done this for the first time. Like this has been done for the first time in the world. Now people will try to do this in other populations. How does it feel? to have that kind of a research or a publication to your name because hamari the publication yahi hoti hai na ke idhar udhar se dekh ke questionnaire leke kar li so how does it feel yeah it feels very good when it's done but when you are yeah. starting it it's a uh, nightmare <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah i'm sure yeah because uh, starting a novel research project is not easy especially and for phd project it should be novel and unique that's the first requirement for any phd project uh, you cannot okay. copy other PhD projects, or you cannot look at the parents' article and all that. So you have to work on a unique or novel research project. Yes, it feels very good, uh, but it was very challenging because yeah. you have to search literature thoroughly. You have to develop your own methodology. And then the way you develop the regression equations and statistical analysis yeah. was a big challenge yeah. at that time for me as well. And uh, that's that was one of the reasons that uh, I was feeling so frustrated, uh, like when I started my research project, I knew everything what I'm going to do, including the methods and everything. But then I was stuck at the statistics and I considered it through one of the best statisticians in Malaysia, but they were of no help to me. Uh, because you are the person who understands your pro uh, project. Nobody yeah. else can want to help you. So then, then I took some extra biostatistics classes, advanced classes. And it really helped me. And now I'm uh, I'm very good in statistics as well, and I'm also conducting workshops on statistics and all that. So that, it feels that's... very good when uh, you are done with your PhD yeah. novel research project. It feels very yeah. good, but it's very challenging as well. I'm sure, sir. Um, and uh, when you when you talk about the statistical analysis part, that is very important because सबसे बड़ा मसला ही research में statistical analysis आता क्योंकि वो हमें समझ नहीं आता because it's very math oriented. So math to wahi hamare healthcare workers ki shuru mein khatam ho jati hai so yes knowing statistical analysis and, and, is very and i also believe that a researcher without the statistical knowledge is incomplete and you yes. you are relying on others you are handicapped so if you are good in uh, if you want to become a good researcher you have to be very good in statistics as well otherwise uh, otherwise you will be relying on others so did you use r software or were you or were you did you use spss mostly over there no, I, I used SPSS. I used okay. SPSS for my analysis because SPSS was uh, much better in terms of regression yeah. equation, which was in line with my uh, research yeah. project. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right. Yes. Sir, thoda sa, I would just uh, one last question about forensic odontology. First, what's the job market like for forensic odontology in Pakistan? And what's the scope of forensic odontology internationally? Because now that you've done a PhD, you've obviously uh, as an academic, you can work in most of the countries, I believe. So internationally or nationally, what uh, scope is for an odontology? Uh, okay, so it's actually, if you talk about the scope of forensic odontology in Pakistan, there's a big scope of uh, forensic odontology. Why? Because in terms of disaster victim identification or management, uh, when we talk about disasters, whether they're natural or man-made in the form of earthquakes, tsunamis, aviation disasters, tsunami, floods, I hamari. So uh, it's, it's not easy for the local government resources, especially in the developing world, 
to manage mm -hmm. such a situation on such a large scale. Yeah, uh, and true. according to the Interpol, there are three primary identifiers. Uh, a DNA profiling, fingerprinting, and dental identification yeah, is one of them. Yeah. And among all these three modalities, the quickest and the simplest method is dental identification. So in Pakistan, we all know that it's very difficult to find advanced facilities of DNA profiling and fingerprinting. Uh, it, it is very uh, tedious as well and challenging, especially we saw in the aviation disasters recently, as well as in the flood yeah, victims and all that. So it's very that's important true. that we should have a forensic ornithologist so that it can help in quicker, simple yeah. and reliable method of identification in disasters in Pakistan. And our country is also on the fault line, so we are frequently having yeah. all those earthquakes and floods and all that. So it's very important. Second, in terms of medical legal aspects, there's a lot of scope as well of forensic ornithology, especially uh, we have seen a lot of rape victims recently in Pakistan, uh, then the child abuse cases and all that. And whether a person is above 18 years old or below 18 years old, or we call it juvenile versus adult age estimation. Yeah. So all these medical legal cases, forensic odontology can provide a very useful information. And they can solve the cases which other modalities may take longer. And yeah. uh, that's what of this forensic odontology in Pakistan. In terms of academia or academic point of view, uh, PMDC has made this or PMC has made uh, it uh, optional speciality at the moment. And any speciality when they're introducing as a compulsory subject, they introduce it as an op optional speciality, yeah. just like yeah. in the history in the past and periodontology yeah. as well. So ultimately in five or six years or seven years, more as more and more forensic odontologists will be trained, this will ultimately become a compulsory That's subject true. even at the yeah. level. So from disasters point of view, from medical legal point of view, from academia point of view, there's a big scope of this speciality. Now, when, when someone asks me about the scope of uh, forensic odontology, actually, if you look around all the major specialities of dentistry, there's a lot of saturation. And yeah. even I know a lot of, but, but completely the FCBS, but it's diff very difficult for them That's to true. find a demonstrator's position. Uh, in the big cities, especially. That's true. That's so true. A lot of situation. Even I tell my students, uh, undergraduate students, that yes. they should also look part, uh, uh, in line with their passion, they should also look mm -hmm. for the other emerging specialities like geriatric dentistry, implantology, radiology, endodontics, forensic odontologies. Because if they do their post graduation in these specialities, family dentistry, then they it can broaden their options. And they should yeah. think of these specialities. And I think our uh, councils should also look into this and they should also introduce this emerging speciality uh, in these uh, curriculums at undergraduate and postgraduate as well. And we, we have started now, as far as forensic odontology is concerned, we have started a PhD program uh, at the Shifa College of Dentistry and yeah. we are also planning to start a master's program in forensic odontology. And with IADSA and HSA, we have initially yeah. uh, launched an advanced diploma program for one year. So with time, uh, more and more forensic odontologists will come and then uh, it will become uh, a compulsory uh, specialty. Yeah. Perfect, sir. Perfect. Um, sir, we'll be moving towards the end of our interview. Um, uh, second last question. Do you feel there is a lack of career counseling in our field and how can this one factor be improved? Just briefly, if you could yeah, shine some light yes, on that. Yes, exactly. There is, uh, uh, we need uh, counselors at the right from day one at the undergraduate yeah. level. As I mentioned earlier, that even at the house jobs, our graduates are not sure, dentists are not sure what they're gonna do. Yeah. So uh, a career counselors should be introduced right from day one, from the year one, uh, and yeah. they should go uh, through the longitudinal thread with them. And by the time when they're done with their final years, each student and uh, graduate must know what they should do. So that's why it's very important to have a career counselor. In fact, each, college or institute must have this department uh, yeah. which is looking after yeah. the, uh, this aspect perfect sir thank you so much <laughs> sir uh, last question we'll be moving towards the last question of our interview it, it has been an amazing one what do you think about this startup of ours and any advice or suggestions that you would like to give us uh, dental, dental talk yes see I, as i mentioned earlier you you guys and your team is doing a tremendous work uh, i'm thank also you so much sir uh, articles as well and uh, oh, I'm a thank you. follower of this platform and I oh, do wait you so for much, your sir. videos and for your uh, write up of literature uh, yeah. so it's a tremendous job and because the way you guys are projecting various aspects of dentistry uh, through this platform in a very yeah. professional way it's thank really you so much, amazing sir. so keep up the good work and well thank you so much sir 
Perfect, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, it has been an amazing interview. I'm sure many people who will watch this interview will learn a lot from the insights that you've given us. Uh, so thank you so much for taking time out this early in the morning. And uh, hopefully, uh, maybe Islamabad Aro after Eid. And uh, Marwa said that she'll take me to Shifa. So hopefully, I'll get to meet you as well, inshallah. Inshallah, I'll be waiting. Yes, I'll be more than happy to see you and uh, we'll have dinner or lunch together, inshallah. Inshallah, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, inshallah, okay. see you in the